but these deer lack in antlers, they make up for in tusks and loud noises <coughs> and being super territorial. And don't forget their surprisingly impressive swimming skills. This is the water deer, also known as the official vampire deer. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Water deer are a small species of deer named for their love of water, and surprisingly, not for the fact that they are saber toothed deer. Male water deer have overgrown canine teeth that point downwards. They look a lot like fangs, which is why people refer to them as the vampire deer. While both the Siberian musk deer and the chevrotain are species of fanged deer that have been nicknamed the vampire deers, the water deer takes it one step closer to their fictitious namesake. They can partially retract their tusks, not dissimilar to Count Dracula. There are two subspecies of water deer, the Chinese water deer and the Korean water deer. They're pretty much the same, except the Korean species is slightly smaller and darker. Obviously, they're native to China and Korea, but you can also find Chinese water deer in Britain. Wait, Britain? If you think the UK is a random place to find a deer that's native to a country 7,700 kilometers away, you would be right. Water deer are not supposed to be there. In 1929, a bunch of water deer escaped Whipsnade Zoo north of London. English zookeepers decided to take the mistake and run with it, releasing dozens of deer into parks and estates around the country. Today, there are at least 1,000 Chinese water deer living in Southeast England. That makes up 10% of their global population. As you may have guessed, water deer like to live near swamps and rivers, but you can also find them in meadows, fields, and grasslands. There are also loads of Korean water deer living in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. Water deer are small deer with long legs, a long neck, and two very cute teddy bear ears. They have very short tails, which are practically invisible, except when the males display their raised tails during mating season. Females have canine teeth too, except theirs are only about half a centimeter long. The male's tusks, on the other hand, can reach up to 8 centimeters. Adult males weigh about 12 kilos, and females are slightly smaller, at about 9 kilos. They're about as tall as a border collie, and about as long as a very stretched out border collie. They're herbivores, with highly sensitive, four-chambered stomachs. These deer struggle to properly digest plant carbohydrates, making them very picky eaters. When it comes to their diet, water deer use their fangs to drain humans of their delicious blood. Okay, not actually. They prefer herbs and young sweet grasses to more mature grass, and find their yummiest food in the lush vegetation of river lowlands. They're also not above sneaking onto farmland and eating delicious veggies. Especially beets. They love beets. Their main predators are leopards, foxes, bears, raccoon dogs, and pesky human poachers. Water deer are elusive creatures, so not a lot is known about their behavior. But we do know that they're great in the water and can cross miles of rivers to reach remote islands. They're also great at hiding thanks to their small size and the tall reeds and rushes of their river home. When they do need to make a run for it, they run by jumping, sort of like rabbits. Like any self-respecting vampire, water deer play it safe by mainly coming out at night, from tusk till dawn. But, as cautious as the deer are, they're also surprisingly vocal. They yap, whistle, squeak, scream, and click. That's right, they're vampiric clickers. And when they're startled, they'll leap away and make a barking noise. <coughs> Members of this species are usually found alone or in pairs. Males are highly territorial and competitive 
especially during the breeding season, which lasts from November to February. Bucks mark their territory with urine, feces, secretions from their scent glands, and by strategically breaking off pieces of vegetation. They'll also seek out females by giving soft, squeaky calls. How romantic! Sometimes, when two bucks fight over a doe, they'll walk very stiffly towards each other and then move parallel for 10 to 20 meters. This is to size the other up. If neither deer backs down, these bucks will use their tusks to decide who gets the girl. That's right, it's a fang fight. The bucks will try to stab and tear at each other's head, shoulders, and back. The fight is over when one surrenders by laying down and putting their head flat on the ground. Or they just run away. While these vicious showdowns are rarely fatal, they could leave the loser considerably incapacitated. Judging by the number of scars seen on male water deer, fighting for females happens pretty frequently. When a male water deer wins a fight, he and the doe will sniff each other for a while. After a few mountings, the actual copulation is brief. Gestation will last about six months. Does aren't as territorial as those wild bucks, but they are known to get aggressive both before and after giving birth chasing away those other females from their birthing territories. Fawns are born from late April to June. Does usually deliver two offspring at a time, but they're able to have up to seven at once. That's a lot for a deer. At birth, fawns weigh less than a kilo and have reddish-brown coats with white spots or stripes. They grow faster than similar deer species and will reach sexual maturity at around six months. The water deer's average lifespan is about 10 years. There are only about 10,000 Chinese water deer left, making them critically endangered. However, in South Korea, the estimated water deer population is over 700,000. These thriving numbers are likely due to the extinction of natural predators, like Korean tigers and leopards. There are so many water deer in Korea that in 1994, they were designated as harmful wildlife because of the damage they pose to farmland and all the car accidents they cause. To be fair, if I were driving down the road and suddenly came face to face with a vampire deer, I would also crash. Because South Korea considers them pests, some local governments actually offer cash bounties to hunters who killed water deer during farming season. Bounty hunting killed over 113,000 Korean water deer in 2016 alone. They may get a bad rap in Korea, but we can't help but love these bouncy little vampires. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.